The, uh, the Notre Dame clubs is, is a very important part of our recruiting pitch, to be honest with you. To be able to talk to a recruit about 270 alumni clubs worldwide, um, and that the power of that network is incredibly valuable to us. And, and to uh, be involved with these clubs and, and develop these relationships. So when, uh, when I was asked to come down and do it, as long as it fit the schedule, it was really important to, to be out here and to be a part of it. How strong is the alumni and the recruiting here in Northeast Indiana? It's incredibly important. It's incredibly important wherever we recruit, uh, being able to help these kids understand that the power of this, this network, the power of this brand, and how far reaching it is. For us in particular, though, in the state, it always starts at home. And, and for us to, to make sure that we're recruiting the top guys in the state first uh, and for them to understand what, what the degree is going to mean in terms of their life beyond football, that's where the, the alumni clubs come in. And it's, it's a huge selling point for us, there's no doubt. Coach, you have the luxury of having Justin Yoon and Tyler Newsom in your kicking game. As a head coach, because you've been a head coach, how does that uh, – you don't have to be concerned with them. How does that help your offense and defensive strategy in the middle of a game? Oh, there's no doubt that it's impactful. And I would I would throw John Shannon into that sure. as well because um, nobody appreciates a specialist until you don't have one. Right. When you don't have one, then it becomes a problem. And, and I think I can't speak uh, about names directly, but you can see that we addressed sure. that yeah. in recruiting here in the last week or so. Um, <laughs> Hopefully I get this downwind today. Um, it gives us, we have a sense of security in, offensively in terms of our ability to flip the field. Uh, I, I, think, uh, I think you only have to look uh, no farther than the bowl game. Uh, Justin Yoon makes two 47-yard-plus field goals. The LSU kids miss two chip shots. And that really is the difference in the game because it keeps us, it keeps us within one score. Uh, for a long time. I, I think uh, those guys are incredibly valuable, and we've been very lucky to, to inherit two good veterans. Um, I, love, I love both kids, uh, their demeanor, their makeup. They're fun to work with. Well, Newsom's a captain. I mean, that says it all uh, from the punter position. Yeah, and it's a little bit unusual, but if, if you were around us every day, uh, people, I think, raised an eyebrow when a punter got elected a captain, but if you were around us every day, it's not shocking at all because he he embodies all the traits that Coach Kelly's looking for. Uh, he's an excellent leader, and, and we're lucky to have him. And educate me on the kickoff change, or the rule change, and how that's going to impact the game this year. It, it, it's uh, really the only major change at the college level is now if you choose to fair catch a ball in the field of play, it will be moved out to the 25-yard line if you fair catch it beyond the 25. They're trying to encourage more fair catches. When the, when the touchback was moved out to the 25, um, people with really good kickers said, all right, we're not going to give up those five yards. We're going to hang the ball up into the air, make you field it on the eight, and, yeah. and we're going we're gonna to surround you and tackle you before you get out there. Um, I would like to see us eventually. I'm very intrigued with what the NFL is doing. And uh, I talked to a bunch of peers at that level, and I think what they're doing might be the answer in terms of taking away double teams, taking away those high-speed collisions, turning it more, uh, turning the play more into a punt return, where it's a one-on-one -on -one athletic play in space. I, I hope that we'll study that at the college game, and I think eventually we will. Um, you know, I've been in, in conversations with, with. Um, with Coach Barry and people at the AFCA, and, and uh, they've been kind enough to include me in some of these conversations, and, and hopefully we'll keep studying it and keep evolving. The one thing for certain is I don't want the play to go away. I want it to be safer. Everybody does, but I don't want the play to go away. I hope there's a, a way for us to fix it. Now, you're the recruiting coordinator. Uh, some of these freshmen like Lindsey or Moala, some, some of these guys going to impact the special teams this fall? I certainly hope so. Uh, who it's going to be, you never know. Uh, I'm not sure anybody last year looked at Isaiah Robertson and said, boy, that guy's going to be an impact player as a freshman, yet he was a four-unit special teams player. Uh, Jordan Jen Markeith was a four-unit special teams player and a very good one. Um, I think Moala specifically, I'm very excited to get to work with him. Um, what Paul might need to catch up on in terms of 
uh, playing the game of football and, and getting caught up to our level. Uh, I think his athletic ability translates pretty quickly to the yeah. to the kicking game, not only as a returner but also as a cover guy. So, uh, and then there are guys that you know. I am so excited to see uh, Alohi Gilman this year, who had to sit last year due to the transfer, and how impactful he's going to be for us. So there's a lot of new faces that we, we're very excited to get them on campus. Our vets reported last night. Our freshmen will be here in two weeks, and um, this is an exciting time. Moala may be your most efficient recruit of all time. I mean, it took you about two and a half minutes to get over to his high school. Yeah, <laughs> and and then you know what? It, it was uh, it was him driving us for a campus. Really, what yeah. solidified? <laughs> we didn't even have to leave campus. But no, it goes back to um, keep, if you got some close to home, you got you got to do it there first. And 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 look, we I mean we know who's here. I mean, and and uh, recruiting's a long way away from being done. We're, we're constantly working the process, but um, our, our fans in the state need to understand we, we, we always start at home first. That's incredibly important to Coach Kelly and to our program. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll make sure every guy in the state that needs to be evaluated gets a thorough evaluation. What are you trying to improve most upon? <laughs> Sorry, what are you mm -hmm. trying to improve most upon from year one to year two in your time back here? Um, well, from a football standpoint, last year was. Uh, for lack of a better term, we got to stop the bleeding. We had given up five special teams touchdowns the year before. Um, I didn't think it was going to be possible to be go from um, one end to the spectrum to the other in, in less than 12 months. My goal last year was to do no harm. We we had to we had to stop making the mistakes that were costing us football games, and I think we did that. Um, now we need to take the next step. We need to, instead of being a negative impact on the game, we need to find a way to have a positive impact. We made some big plays last year. The, the, the fumble recovery against USC off the punt. Uh, you know, Justin banging the two big field goals against LSU. Uh, there were moments in big games where uh, you might look at our kickoff coverage numbers and say they're pretty average, but there were moments in big games we tackle USC inside the 20 a couple times where I felt like we stepped up in big moments. But ultimately, Coach Kelly and I would like to, to, to see our units be more impactful in a positive manner. Uh, and that's just another step in the process now and, and believe that we'll get there. Even though you don't get a chance to necessarily coach him very much, but a guy like Drew Tranquil, who's the captain. You I know, coach Drew they, a lot. OK, <laughs> so how do you see a guy like Drew as a captain, how do you, how does he impact the program? First of all, he's just a great person, and and that's where he's got his biggest impact. Um, how he leads, how he helps his peers, how he cares about the people around him. He is the definition of service uh, servant leader. He, uh, he leads by helping others. Um, in terms of my world, having Drew stand up in front of the team as a starter, as a captain last year, and say, put me wherever you need me. I don't care. I'll play anywhere you need. Such, such a good example for the young players. Because in college, from time to time, we will deal with guys who feel like, hey, I'm a starter on this team. I shouldn't be on kickoff, or I, sh I shouldn't be you know, having to play on two or three special teams units. And I, you know... I try to help them understand that's not reality. I mean, you you look at you look at Alabama in the national championship game, and they line up on kickoff, and there's seven or eight starters out there. And so, when you have one of your most high profile uh, leaders on the team buy in from the day that you arrive, it it sets a great example, and it makes it easier when you're dealing with the rest of the crew. With vets coming back this weekend, rookies coming up soon. What's the optimism surrounding this team right now? Oh, I don't think we look at it from from a big per picture point of view. It's it's interesting. I was drove here with a friend today, and we we're talking about. Um, it feels like now everybody's starting to gear up for football. Like, hey, the season's coming, and let's get ourselves going. As coaches, we have 23 days left, and then we get our vacation. So <laughs> we're we're not exactly you know we want to see our kids right now and take a deep breath. Um, what we're looking forward to is being around our players and having them back on campus. I don't like walking through our building when they're not on campus because it's quiet, it's, it's, laid, uh, it's laid back. Our building's fun when, when there's 105 guys hanging around and you walk through the locker room and you, know, you hug their necks and, and um, 
you know, to get them working out again and be able to observe that will be fun. Um, but we literally, we go about this thing through Coach Kelly's leadership. We go through this thing day to day. You know, I'm sure today they're focused on having the best Monday they can have in the weight room. And we're not necessarily thinking, uh, boy, look at the schedule. There's a way to win 9, 10, or 11 games here. It's just that's not the way that we function. I understand the fan base does, but um, we, we kind of we kind of go at it day to day here. So. Any specific, specific message for everyone here tonight? Uh, a, I'm just so thankful to be here, and we appreciate the invitation to the fans in the area, their support, and uh, I can tell you as somebody that was at Notre Dame and then left and experienced other places and having been a head coach, this place is so special, and um, we don't take it for granted. Uh, I consider myself very lucky for having had the opportunity to be here once and then to come back a second time. I'm so thankful to Coach Kelly and Jack Swarbrick and uh, – uh, I love it here. Uh, I don't know if there's an assistant coach in America that's as emotionally connected to a place as I am to this one. Um, and like, I'm out with Clark Lee on the road, and you know, you're with Clark driving, and you know, Clark talks about, yeah, this this is really cool now. I mean, I don't think yeah. people understand how neat a place this is to work, and we talk about that all the time. And and uh, I, I, you know, I wonder sometimes if the fan base. I mean, we realize how cool it is, and, and we appreciate it. And we appreciate the support and, and um, game day in, in South Bend. There's nothing like it, so, so we're thankful. What are you hoping to shoot out there today? Uh, <laughs> I'm really hoping it's a scramble and that I will find a way to make a contribution somewhere along the line. Uh, there's, it, my dad used to say, if you have an assistant coach who's a really good golfer, he's not a very good coach. Yeah. You know. <laughs> The head coaches should be really good golfers, and uh, I only had four years as a head coach. It wasn't enough to fix my game, so uh, I'll be out here today just having fun and, and, you know, honestly happy to be out of the office for a day and enjoy some sunshine.